Hello and welcome to Leafs Talk. Uh, you're seeing me on the left side of the screen if you're watching on Sportsnet Plus and YouTube. It's very rare. I'm usually on the right where my friend Anthony Petrilli from Maple Leaf Hot Stove is right now. Uh, you can check out his Leafs Notebook every Monday. I uh, got a great podcast on there as well. And he joins us this evening after a, what was a sleepy game for a lot of the game where I was kind of like keeping one eye open on the couch, a little too comfortable. And then all of a sudden that third period turned into an electric factory. And I don't know where you want to start. I guess we'll probably start with the Matthews goal. I do want to start with the fight and what happened at the end, but we'll start with the Matthews 60. And uh, I guess we can go from there, but uh, how are you, bud? I'm good, man. Like, you know, that was a fun game. Sometimes, you know, I know it was sleepy at points, but the way it all ended and the yes. way everything came together, mm -hmm. sometimes you just have to enjoy the fun ones. Not everything has to be a, you know, referendum on the playoffs yeah, or what's going to happen come spring. Yeah. You're going to be miserable. There's 82 games. You have to enjoy it a little bit along the way. Yeah. I enjoyed it. It was, Me too. it was wild in there. That was Every year, there's a game in Buffalo, which is much like the first one, which is 9-3, mm -hmm. and you go, if I made that trip, I would be absolutely yes. furious. But then every couple of years, there's a game like tonight where you go, I wish I was there because it was bumping. I actually had it circled. Uh, a few of the guys that I'm buddies with, we had actually mentioned doing it, and it was just one of those things we never followed through on. And boy, am I not thrilled that we didn't follow through on it. Like, I Okay, so we'll start with the fans down there. I, you know, if you're listening to this podcast, when you, you get home from the game, I'm mean, sure it's one of those games where you just want to consume all content from, you know, it's like one of those things you just, you're doing your morning scroll tomorrow, reading every article, watching every highlight when you're coming home from the game. I don't think you could ever draw up a better game for a road fan, like to be on the road. It's 80% Leaf fans. Like there's usually a lot of Leaf fans there, Anthony, but that yeah. seemed like more than I can ever remember there being. It was unbelievable. And in a weird way, and I'll get your take on this, I think it was better that the 60 happened there. Like, I feel like that was a much more rousing uh, sort of ovation for Matthews than it would have been at Scotiabank. Am I crazy on that? Not crazy. I mean, part of the, I just have this kind of gripe in general with the entire league is I think goal horns kind of suck. And oh, there's something quite a zag. I don't mind yeah. it though. And there's something to be said about just I mean, I, I don't know if we'll play the audio, if we'll be able to pipe the audio in, but you just yeah. the eruption of the crowd mm. on a goal. Like, no, you know, the goal horn is just so artificial. It's actually that... a great point that you don't hear the original pop. Like when you watch you're a big soccer guy, right? Like when you watch yeah. uh, the EPL or whatever, and they score a big goal, the pop they're not blowing a horn. No. It's like the pop of the crowd is what's amazing. It's an awesome point that I've actually never thought. I didn't think we were going to start with goal horns, but it's a great take. <laughs> yeah, it's so, you know, the whole thing. But, I, you know, I do think, obviously, if it was in Toronto, you yeah. probably would have got the MVP chant. I, yeah, yeah. I remember being in the arena after Matthew scored. It was he scored against Dallas. Was I think was that for 60 or was something? It was some was sort of milestone. Break the Leaf record. Yes, he, there he, we he go. Beat, he beat Vibes record. Uh, and I was, was in. Yeah. I was in Toronto the next game and it was against Montreal on Saturday mm -hmm. night and he had two that game. We were like, oh my God, is he going to score like six and hit 60 right now? But <laughs> he, I like the crowd was awesome. I, you know, when they showed the replay at the first break and um, it was, it was a great standing O in there, but it, there's something particularly cool about it being in Buffalo, all those fans, it's a mm -hmm. packed house, you know, not every, there's very few teams actually in the league that could get, that kind of opportunity, you know, like there's nowhere the, you know, I'm just picking them out. Florida Panthers could go and get yeah. that kind of reception. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's no right? team really. Like, I mean, the Habs, maybe like, I don't, maybe. I, I'm going to tell you right now, I haven't watched a lot of Habs Buffalo games this year, you know, hand up, but I don't know when they go down there, if it looks like that, it's pretty it's good. the proximity good. though, the proximity yeah. with the, with Toronto down there, it's a cheap trip. I just feel like, you know, there's a big thing and we'll get to Matthews here in a second, but I do feel that, you know, the perception of Leaf fans is tied a lot to what Scotiabank Arena looks like on a Tuesday night a lot. And people are like, oh, it's yeah. a quiet building. But one of my, like, tentpole takes has always been that if you just had a one game a year where it was first come, first serve game, where it was like people lined up and the first 20,000 people got into the building that were Leaf fans, the loudest building in the league by far. 
right? Yeah. Like, there's there'll be no comparison. There'll be no more loud barn. So I just think it's the type of people that get to go down there that wouldn't normally get to go sit lower bowl at Scotiabank because it's just absurd. It's too much, right? Like to go to a game, it's like a second mortgage. So I, I think it's just kind of the the way it goes with with the people that get to go to that game. So yeah, Matthews. Uh, actually, do we have the sound up? Uh, yeah, we have Jobo? sound. Let's play the. Let's we'll play, play the, sound. the clip if we can. If we can roll it here. I see a yes. Okay, let's rip. Let's rip. Uh, <laughs> yes. Here we go. Yeah. Okay. Not hearing any sound. Are am I supposed to be hearing sound or no? Anyways, you're watching his goal here. Um, oh, here we go. Right up. Okay, so the two things, the reason I wanted to play that, first of all, the, the GOAT, CC Chris Cuthbert, like, that is such a huge moment for Matthews to get his, I know it's this, the second time he's done it, absolutely nails it, but what he says in there, right, it's only the ninth guy in history to get 60 goals twice, like, what we're watching, Anthony, and we can talk about the playoff stuff, and it's always measured against all these failures, but we're watching one of the best goal scorers in the history of the league play for the Leafs. Like this full stop yeah. and he gets 60 again and you just have to enjoy it. You really do on nights like tonight. Yeah, you absolutely have to enjoy it. And if you look at the crowd, they're enjoying it too. Yes. I mean, the whole, <laughs> yeah. that, that is for, for Leaf fans that have been around for a while. That is, that is 2004 Alex McGillney, a thousandth point to tie the game with like a minute left. Yep. If you, if you know the game, Go watch it. If you don't know the game, go watch it. It's up mm -hmm. on YouTube. You'll see the game in six. It's Caberlet scores the overtime winner. It's just mm -hmm. an unbelievable. Remember that extremely well. That is the closest to. So the whole crowd. I, I also want to point out just as a very quick. I know the story is Matthews, obviously. Yeah. And it was a sixth shot of the of the night to finally score. And you could see mm -hmm. it kind of weighing on him. So absolutely. In, in terms of like the perspective of the team, I'm happy. It's just like it's over with now. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and we can all move on. He got it. It was awesome. It was a great moment. Let's all move on from, mm -hmm. you know, after tonight. Uh, I, but from him taking fadeaway jumpers from the blue line, yeah. like we can, we can move past that. Yeah, it, it's, it's, uh, you could see a wang on him. Yeah. And I yeah, felt like absolutely. it, it almost felt like that for 50 as well, but it was all in the span of like five minutes in Arizona. But that mm -hmm. like five minutes, you had like Matthew Nyes going into that game saying he was going to force feed passes to Matthews. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't think you are in a position in the NHL to be, you know, like changing your play drastically. And I also don't think Matthews needs your help to score. Yeah. So like that all coming through, but just the six shots, he was all over the place on the night in, mm -hmm. in terms of creating offense, driving for it. And in fairness, that's what you want to see. I don't think he was forcing anything to like an insane level, but you could see it kind of seeping in and, and you don't want it to hang over his head now it's it's Florida Tampa this week yep. and there's no talk of 60 it's like get some points yep. in two really big division games so it's it's nice that it's all done couldn't agree more with you on that and I think it's actually the perfect thing here because 70 is I think out of the question now right like he just had to get on a stupid heater he'd need a couple like a hat trick to really get yeah. back on pace to do it and I've been talking about this since like the start of the year that if he got close to 70 and it's like you're playing those last two games against Tampa and Florida and you're maybe playing Florida in the first round and you're playing them a week before the playoff starts. And Matthews, you know, I wouldn't mind him missing that one. I don't think there's a reason 100%. to play him against a particularly dirty team. You want to give him a little rest before the playoffs and he's on 68. It's like, well, he's definitely playing. And yeah, I just think that, that 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 conversation now has gone moot and I think it's a good one. Um yeah, this is just, also a stretch of 10 and 19 for the Leafs coming yeah. up here, right? So, so it's like some load management would be nice for a few of these guys. I absolutely agree. So one quick more thing on Matthews before we move on to, I think, Samsonov, which is the next biggest story. I just, the way he's playing without Marner, he's really yeah. different. He is really different. And like, this is one of Kipper's tentpole takes, talking about takes that we all have. He always talks about how, you know, Marner plays the center role on their line. He has the puck. He passes the puck. Like he, he has the puck more 
than Matthews does a lot of the time when they're playing together. And you've really seen Matthews over the stretch, especially now that he's playing with Domi and Bertuzzi, he's passing so much more effectively and he's passing so much more. And he just is playing. And like, I'm not saying he's not a good center or whatever. He's excellent defensively, clearly. But just he's really, really changed his game since he has. And it took him a little while to get used to it. But the way he's playing without Marner really does tantalize you into them not being on the same line in the playoffs. Where it's like, if you can find a way to have them separated, it's a real advantage. I just love the way he looks right now. Yeah, he's more involved in the game because... Yeah he also realizes he has to take more control absolutely given the circumstances and that's fine that's fair that's what you want to see i think there always seemed to be this notion that he you know he needed to play with marner and i think the conversation is more so that marner's an awesome player in his own right so obviously mm -hmm. playing two awesome players that legitimately complicated complement each other well you have a right-handed shot a left-handed yep. shot one guy's a passer one guy's a score i mean yes but everyone's it's a match it. made in heaven it really yeah. is but is the team better like greater than the sum of their parts when those two are together and so far come playoff time that you know now we're going back into playoff conversation mm -hmm. but the reality is is when it's come playoff time they have not been yeah and teams can kind of put all their eggs in one basket of shutting those guys down and it was it was very much like last Saturday they played Edmonton and mm -hmm. the Oilers loaded up their top line. It made no it made very little sense to me personally, especially playing a depleted Leaf team. And you heard Jake McCabe after it was it was almost like they were a little insulted and took that personally as a yeah. group, like yeah. that they were going to load up and come into Toronto and steamroll them. Mm -hmm. And like you had Bobby McMahon after the game calling it out. Like Bobby <laughs> McMahon is like he's not even played sixty games in the league, and he's like. Well, they're, you know, we thought we would be better than the rest of their team. Well, Bobby McMahon would be playing on their top line right now. He's one of the best players in the league all of a sudden. So I don't know. <laughs> he, looks, <laughs> he, can, he looks great. He so. can call them out to anyone. Like, I just, I respect his opinion now as he looks like a seasoned veteran scoring winger all of a sudden. So maybe you got to respect his opinion. The other part to that too, though, is their penalty kill. So I like, that's a story in this game. Like they were perfect. Yeah. The Sabres, you know, the Leafs kept them in the game. They kept mm -hmm. taking penalties, two over the glass, the offense, like two offensive zone penalties, Dewar mm -hmm. and and Matthews. Yeah. I, you know, I didn't think the Benoit penalty was a penalty was at absurd all. Call, that, I mean, we could spend all that. That's the thing. We don't yeah, do a lot of refs talk on this show because you could just do it. The you're going to drive yourself crazy. Yeah, yeah it's like every night. That's not a penalty it. in the National yeah. League. Like of that, course not. It, that can't happen. But their penalty kill was excellent. And I think we're starting to see Dewar and Camp kind of figure each other out a little bit. Mm-hmm. To the point where maybe you're looking at penalties where you don't at least always start Camp and Marner together. Mm -hmm. And it's not like Marner on the penalty kill. I mean, he's good on the penalty kill, but yeah. he's not like prime Marshawn that like, you know, was coming down. Score. He's not like Travis Konechny this year who has no. like leads the league in shorthand. The goals. penalty kill was like 24th with him in the lineup. It wasn't like it yeah. was lighting it up with him there. It's yeah. been but bad you're, but you're not, he's gone. But. but you're not getting the offense from him. Like there's no, like you might get some, but there's no like, outrageous extra offense mm -hmm. from Marner on the penalty kill. Like you just want him to kill penalties. So at the end of the day, if you have camp and Dewar kind of saving the minutes, like what you want Marner doing is playing on the power play, which was yeah. again, awful tonight without him. Awful. And you want him playing five on five. Like you want him producing. So, you know, like we're talking, you know, Matthews, Marner, not necessarily together, but I think there's also this other layer of like preserve his minutes. Like have him doing the things yeah. that matter most because you like doesn't have to be on the penalty kill all the time. Like you're gonna put him there, but it doesn't have to be like 24 a night for Marner, clearly. Agreed. So talking about the penalty kill, uh, one of the stars of the penalty kill this evening was Ilya Samsonov, uh, who was Excellent. he was the star of the night. He was stellar tonight. He was amazing and tonight. I, you know, this really makes you feel good as a Leaf fan watching him play this well. And I'm trying my best to beat back the early season demons and these weird demons of him leaving games for no reason when he's like not really that hurt. And every time he yeah. pushes off, I'm worried. I have to, I have to say like, I, I I'm lying. I'd be lying to the audience if I didn't say my butt puckered a little bit every time he pushed over to his right, but God, he was solid tonight. And this looked like a, the guy that was a huge reason that they got past the first round last year. And, you know, I think everybody thought, sort of thought wall was going to come back. And just, you know, usurp Samsonov. And he was the guy that they all, 
they had pretty clearly wanted to win the battle from the start. But I have to give Samson a ton of credit, man. He has not just, he just has not given it up. Like a lot of times in the competition, it doesn't go as well for him or whatever. And we all know that conversation. But tonight, man, I, I was really impressed. Say who gets the shutout, earned it. And he just looks confident. Swagger, man. He's playing with a ton of swagger. Yeah, and it's also important to note the last time they were in Buffalo, right? Like, they lost 9-3. 9-3 Samson, is such a Samsonoff score. let in a terrible goal against Greenway to start that game. Yep. And he ended up getting yanked. And so for him to come back to Buffalo, it was mm -hmm. it was 100 days ago, I believe. That's what Chris, Chris Cuthbert said mm. at the start of the game. So 100 la days later, he comes back and shuts them out. And he was he was the player he was the best player in this game I thought like the yeah, that's fair the, the multiple breakaway saves on the shorthanded for the Sabers especially the rebound follow up and and the crowd going crazy I mean mm -hmm. he like again the Leafs kept the Sabers in the game a little bit some of it was some of the you know that call on Benoit didn't help and a few other things but by and large like the Leafs kind of kept them around they weren't scoring they were kind of out of a flow because of all the penalties and. And he was excellent. Anything yeah. that they created, he turned them down. And as much as we're talking about the penalty kill, it's not like the Sabres had zero looks. You're going to get oh, some looks. And they have good play. They have good players on their on their power play. Like yeah, they are, they're, so they're putting out guys that really shoot it well. And like the bottom half of their roster isn't great, but they have stars who are good power play players, like Tage and Dalene. Like they they can play. So for them to you know not only kill all these penalties, but a big part of it was Samsonov, which is any penalty kill. You need your goalie to make saves. That's that's an obvious one. But yeah, I just, I thought he was really good tonight. And I, I, we do this, I say this a lot of the show, but I'll say it again. I truly can't believe it's the same guy. I, uh, I think that there is a chance. There's a part of me that says they went and got uh, George Samsonov from Russia, who was like his brother that no one knew. And they just put him in there. And it's just, I, he's, it's crazy. It's the start of the year. He was so bad, Anthony. Like it was so bad. I thought he was done. I didn't think he had a career. And now he's true. like. Oh, go ahead. Truthfully, it's goaltending. Like the, yeah, it's, right. it's it's a little bit sense. magic beans. Like yeah, it doesn't 100%. necessarily make sense. I mean, I like I remember writing back in December. I wouldn't have put him on waivers because I thought New Jersey should have claimed him because they had cap space at the time. Oh, and yeah. now I watch Sam Snoff and go, like, imagine Jersey claimed him because they're like goaltending has sunk them oh, this year. What a save that is. And, I didn't really realize how good a save yeah, that was. That Holy. was an unbelievable save. But if you if you think about Jersey claiming them and where they could have been, I mean, the Leafs waiver luck this year, like, they haven't had this for years. Like, well, you know, they got rid Bobby of, they got McMahon. Rid of and then it, it, immediately <laughs> everyone stopped claiming the guys. <laughs> so I don't know if there's something to it. Like I, <laughs> I'm not going to dig in deeper on it, but you look at it, it's like Samsonov cleared, yeah. McMahon cleared. Benoit cleared Jones, like Martin Jones, Jones cleared, and he had that like 16 game run. Yes, I, I mean, where would they be if teams like paid attention to the waiver wire this year? Because the, the, the Penguins not claiming Bobby McMahon like legitimately floored me at, at the beginning of the season because yes. he's younger, that team's old. Dubas should absolutely know. like, I thought for sure, I was like, that's going to be a spiteful claim the second it went down, yeah. and obviously, they didn't do it. and you know, thankfully they didn't. And now Bobby McMahon's found a home here and he signed for a couple yep. of years and all that fun stuff. But, you know, Man. they lost Will Laguson on waivers, who I liked. But, <laughs> you know, if you were like, it's no yeah. offense to Will Laguson, it's but okay. the rest, yeah, compared to what's happened, I mean, I don't think anyone's going to lose any sleep over that. And I don't think the Ducks are like, you know, we're going to lock this guy in. No, I know. Three I, years I, here. I, the, everyone will survive with that happening. It's okay. So, yeah. We've gone long enough. Now we get to talk about my favorite part of the game, other than Matthew scoring 60. But it's the... Okay, it wasn't a brawl, because there was a lot of weird you hugging your, going You gotta on. take your gloves off. You gotta take your gloves I, off. It was a weird... I, I love Mark Giordano so much, Anthony. I, I gotta tell you, man, I respect the hell out of this guy. He gives you every single thing that you would want. Like, just heart and soul. He can't piss a drop at the end of the game. He gives it all. He's got it all out there. There's nothing yeah. left. But he just goes into this swinging wildly. He doesn't know who yeah. he's hitting. He doesn't know what's up. Dalene does a dirty little move. He's sneaky dirty. Always been sneaky he's dirty. Always been dirty. And he just he, which I respect. And I, I think he's a great yeah. player. Like he's a hateable guy. He's a sneaky dirty dude. And he doesn't like the Leafs. Him and Matthews. My prediction is that Matthews' second career fight will be against him. But 
I just I thought that it was a borderline hit. Like I didn't think it was that bad. It was sneaky no. dirty a little bit. But for this to happen was a really great response. And you know the 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 narratives and the quantifiables and all this stuff and the the intangibles, but. This is uh, this is the stuff that the Joes and the Tobacos and the uncles love to see. This is an excellent response from a borderline hit from the Sabers. So yeah, I have a, I have a ton of time for Mark Giordano. I mean, you know, not only does he come home, but he takes the discount. Yep. You know, at, at the time that he signed that deal, he definitely could have way, made way more money no on the open market. He he wanted to be here. You know, which I think played into him getting traded here in the first place. Like I, you know, I don't Sorry think they just laugh. got him by chance. No, Sorry it's true. Laugh. But we're watching the on Sportsnet Plus here, and it was just big man. And who was he? Just they were legitimately dancing. It looked like a high school dance. It looked like me in high school. Yeah, they got to <laughs> they got to turn their they got to take their gloves off for yeah. it to be like Anyways, a legitimate line GM. brawl. Sorry for interrupting you. No, it's okay. And and you know, when Giordano went sliding into the boards there against Arizona, yeah, like. I, I was heartbroken. I was like, I hope that's not his last shift ever in the NHL. Oh, I like, thought I, it was, I thought it was for sure. I thought it and, absolutely was. And you know, the, the father passing away, and and then he comes back and he scores, yeah. and and then this for this to happen tonight, mm -hmm. it, you know, like that again. Like I know everyone always wants to talk about playoffs, but like sometimes you just have to like enjoy the moment and be yeah. a fan. And absolutely. to me that that's a be a fan and enjoy the moment like recognize what you're seeing like i i try not to throw it out there lightly but he legitimately is a warrior the way that Absolutely. he plays and, and throws his body in front of pucks and the way that he battles you know he's not getting by on talent anymore this isn't five years ago norris caliber mark giordano this is you know i'm milking every last part of me that i can get for mm -hmm. this team and for, you know, for guys to see that, I hope that's inspiring within the team. I'm sure it is. I'm sure Absolutely. that's not lost on guys. And, you know, that Darlene play wasn't crazy dirty. That wasn't get suspended dirty, but that it was, it was bad intentions. It warranted, it warranted the response. Absolutely. Uh, it definitely did. And, and he was the first one without blinking. I wasn't entirely sure if they were going to respond when it happened. Just kind of watching live. There was a yeah. pause there for a there second. Was. And I was going, oh, okay, we'll see. And then I went, oh, okay, never mind. This is it's on. Geo. It's on now. It's, it's Geo. <laughs> yeah. And and Bertuzzi was right in there too, yeah. which, you know, he was looking for anyone at that point. He, I'll grab anybody and I'm yeah. I'm willing and ready at, at any point here. So you kind of, you watch the whole sequence of events and, and the crowd's going nuts and it's 90% mm -hmm. Leaf fans and oh. the team's into it. And Matthew scored 16. Again, a game that was very much sleepy. You know, we haven't even talked about the first two goals yet yeah. of the game. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, Robertson finally scores again. Mm. Not finally. I mean, he scores again. Yeah. But after, but, after four turnovers on the shift that before he scored, it was like the I perfect think, Robertson shift. <laughs> yeah. And I don't, I don't know if we want to get to that at, at this point and, yeah. and start to transition from that. But, yeah. you know, I think that's part of what they'll have to look at again, going back to the playoffs is it, Holmberg had a few tonight, mm -hmm. right in the middle of the ice. I, I thought that was, I thought the game against Carolina was his best game at center. And I thought this was his worst game at center. This was yeah. crazy. That yeah. was absolutely crazy. Uh, just over five minutes into the game, the Leafs just had a lead. Uh, you know, to do that was was stunning. And then the sequence before the goal happened, again, it started with the puck on his stick, time and, and space, and he's careless with the puck here. I mean, oh, yeah. first a bad pass, but then the play looks kind of settled down here. It should be settled down. This is the NHL. Yeah, that you know you have time and space. That's a really bad force pass. That Oof. that cannot happen. Yeah. So I think what may what helps you sleep at night is that there's just no chance these three guys are playing together in the playoffs when Marner's back and if they get Yarncroc back. I don't. I mean, which we haven't yeah. heard an update out on at all. So I don't know if he will be back in time for the playoffs, Yarncroc. But uh, I, this is just Chef Keef in the kitchen cooking. Like he, you know, how many different line combinations he's had. Over this yeah. season, like it's an, it's, he's just, he's like, let's see, these games are borderline meaningless. Let's see what can pop here. Let's put these three guys together who turns out to be the most responsible one. Like I do like Holmberg, but I agree with you with the up and down nature of his game. Like, he does have big time brain fart nights where you're like, oh boy. And I, I it think can't that happen at center. Yeah. It I, no, it can't. And I don't think they'll play him at center. I think when, when push comes to shove, I, you know, I, 
I don't know what they do. I mean, that's why at the deadline, maybe they should have got another bigger name center than Connor Dewar. But uh, it's just, I, I don't, I don't picture Sheldon Keefe, who is obsessed with like control of a hockey game, putting uh, Holmberg at center in a series against the Florida Panthers. Like, I just have a hard time believing that he'd do that. Yeah, and, and he's honestly, he's also been really good on the wing, so I don't want to take yeah. that away from him. He's he's legit, uh, to me, on the wing, he's he's in the playoff lineup. Yep. I think he's been excellent on the wing. Mm -hmm. He's starting to come along as a penalty killer here, which is mm -hmm. important. His face-off percentage actually climbed like 8% since his rookie year, um, so that's good. I just, I don't recall him being this poor defensively at center last season. I remember there was a point last season where Sheldon Keefe was praising him as a rookie, saying he's basically never at a position. Mm -hmm. And this season, whenever he's played center, it's almost as if he's had to slow down because when you play wing, it's the easiest position in the sport. Yeah. Right. You just go up and down the wall oh, and man. you don't really have to worry too much. Patrolling the walls of beer league my whole life, yeah. buddy. It's an easy game. Yeah. Fine. Cut off the pass to the D man. <laughs> Snap maybe one stand in the way. When you get it. That's the best. Yeah. Th <laughs> that's it. You don't have to worry about going down low. Nope. You know, and none of that stuff. So, you know, I think Holmberg is his game has really grown in terms of making plays and, you know, being a contributor mm -hmm. along the wall. But when it comes back to center, you kind of see, you know, both of the plays that we just showed were, were him trying to make plays. It, yeah. You know, it wasn't the puck he couldn't handle the pass or anything. It was him trying to make a play. Of course, it and it, it was a terrible decision both times. So, you know. But you also see the benefit of Robertson. You know, I don't want to yeah. totally slag the, the whole play, and I'm not saying that he should be <sighs> in the lineup full-time or anything, but, mm. you know, that's a goal scorer's finish. It, for sure. That, it, th that is hard to teach. I mean, for a team that has not scored, they scored two goals or less, seven straight playoff games to get eliminated last year. That puck was off his stick in, in about a second, yeah. and he beat him cleanly. How many guys do the Leafs have that can do that? Uh, a few, a few for sure. And they have the <laughs> best one in the league, but yeah. it, you can never have enough guys that can put no. the puck in the net. So oh, it's a beautiful finish and he loves five. It's a great finish. Robertson yeah. loves five hole. That little shot bang. Like that's a quick, yeah. fast release. There's no chance I, for Lucan in on that. So I also don't know what Bryson's read there was. I, no. I mean, I've probably watched it 10 times. It was a two on one, and he just went. Ah, I'm gonna skate right at nice. We'll see right, what he's, happens. He's like, oh, buddy, I'm in Cabo mode. It's that, that was now. the like, easiest pass. <laughs> that was the easiest pass that yeah. Nice could have. You know, Nice made a great play to win the battle, get the puck out, and turn up ice. Yeah, and you see the advantages of to him on the third line because he's coming out with way more pucks, and you know he has every game. He seems to have a chance where he just kind of drops his shoulder and makes a play mm -hmm. a little bit more than when he was against top guys. But that pass was so easy to make because Bryson just went, yeah, I'm just going to skate at him. And it, it so, was, that was crazy bad by him. So the last thing I'm going to bring up, and I don't want to end on a negative, but I'm just going to bring it up. Yeah. I don't get why when Marner is not out there, the idea of Bertuzzi and Tavares on the same power play unit to me is in, who's passing. They don't have anyone passing. Yeah. It's so weird yeah. to me. Like they have, they're so hesitant to do Domi on that top unit. They've only done it, I think, maybe one or, or twice during this stretch when Marner's been out, but they're just so predictable. Like, it's going to go up to the top. It's going to go over to Nylander. He's going to hold it for a little bit. Going to try to cross, go cross ice to Matthews. They have one guy on him, and then it's just the two guys at the side of the net not touching it ever. Like, two guys touch it all the time. It's it's They need another passing option out there. It's really, really predictable, and it'll all be moot, I guess, when, Ma when Marner comes back and they can get in more of a... But right now, it is hard to watch. It's so predictable. The so the very the first power play they had, they had Nylander and Matthews on their one timer side. Yeah, and we we've shown the clip of of Nylander finding Matthews with a cross ice play. Matthews, it wasn't a one timer, but it was a quick release off. Yeah. It was the only good chance they had on that power play. And then the second power play they had, they flipped them because presumably they weren't getting any sort of down low play and the Sabres were pushing three up, you know, one right on Matthews, one right on yep. Nylander and right, one right up on Connor Timmons. Who's not exactly going to break a, a pressure or no. four check or whatever you want to call it. I hate it. him up there. Can we it, put some, can we put Gio up there? I don't like, I having him up there is a wild it, ride. It's unpredictable. I, I think it's tough no matter who they have at this point, because yeah. teams are just forcing them up top. And when they switched, Nylander and Matthews for the second power play, 
Nylander had a few sequences where Bertuzzi was wide open down low yeah. and he was holding it or curling back or looking cross ice. And to your point, it had to be a bump down low. At that point, you have Nylander, a righty on his strong side, mm-hmm. passing it to Bertuzzi, a lefty who's also, his stick is away from the net at that yeah. point and it's wide open the blade. And Bertuzzi is a good passer down low. Like that is. is one thing that he's very good at. And one thing I didn't know about him that like has yeah. surprised me throughout his time with the Leafs is how good of a passer he is. Yeah. And if you go back and watch his series against Boston or his series with Boston against Florida, that was where he did a lot of damage. He created a lot down there with that passing play. So, mm-hmm. you know, in the absence of Marner, I think they really have to be trying to push that, that Nylander Bertuzzi bump down low. And instead they're too up high yeah but i i will say as as i see we're at the 30 minute mark one thing i i do want to flag and it's getting a little bit lost in this game Mm -hmm. but nylander was was unbelievable tonight oh my god that movie made into the middle that movie made into the middle i wish that went in because that edge work is otherworldly man that that was highlight of the month type play absolutely like this was awesome the the little cut in bobby mcmahon also just driving the net and taking bodies with them but then you also go back to the first goal. I mean, he got the puck at the top of the circle in his own zone. And he oh. just just blazed down the wall. You look at it, done. Neutral zone's over. See mm-hmm. two guys right at him. Man. Acres of space. Acres of space for Tavares because two guys went right at Nylander. He just totally broke their whatever they were trying to do in the neutral zone. He just said, yeah, I'm, I'm done with this. And just blew right by everybody. In the second period, he drew a penalty doing the exact same thing. I mean, he was he was flying all night. He gets rewarded with the point there. He easily mm-hmm. could have had a couple more. He was really, really good tonight. It gets, you know, Matthews gets 60. Samsonov gets the shutout. There's the line brawl. We talk about all those things. Yeah. It gets lost. But Nylander came out and really was, to me, the difference maker for the first two periods of this game for the Leafs. That coupled with the Leafs getting the Robertson, you know, bang goal yeah. and the penalty kill mm-hmm. as, you know, as part of Samsonov really shutting the door. So a lot of good things for the Leafs to build on and, yeah. you know, some things, particularly power play that they still need to kind of sort out. The last thing I'll say about Nylander is the, the, the long, well, not long, but the stretches of offensive apathy with him where like we used that's what used to drive you insane with him yeah. where he'd go through like a week or two where he just wouldn't be there it's just completely gone like you can talk yeah. about his attention to defa- detail detail defensively say that 10 times fast right now during these meaningless games but it used to be that would go and the scoring would go and it's like not anymore he is just filling it up every night like he is truly one of the elite elite offensive players in the league right now and you're right for pointing it out. He's yes. just he's been he's been awesome. So anything he's else? Or? That, he no, he's driving that line and and yeah, the last thing I'll say is it's always mm-hmm. nice to win in Buffalo. That's a house of horrors for Toronto. <laughs> oh, yeah. but, Cut it any way you want. If, if yeah. you've been a fan for any length of time, it's never mattered how good the Leafs are, or how bad the Sabres yeah. are. They go into that into that barn and it's usually a mess. And you know, to come in the big win like that, yeah. Samsonov standing ovation, Matthew yeah. standing ovation. 60 the shutout the line brawl i mean enjoy dream it that's night. a fun one dream that's... night for them down there and the thing is they're wearing those jerseys too so i'm like i got yeah ryan miller at the start yeah. of his career i got hasek i got palmonville i got all Danny these like Briere, chris Norman. drury oh yeah like hated those yeah teams. tim connelly did... threw yes. his own legs Tom, Tim like... connelly sneaky unbelievable hands one of the unbelievable like, hands He's really fifth, really good mixtape if you want to go back and i think on that note pick. anthony like on that note, we will end it uh so again anthony petrelli oh i gotta do the old bunk stuff like on youtube uh <laughs> like uh you gotta subscribe to this podcast leave a comment as long as it's nice anthony follow him on twitter at a petrelli Go to Maple Leaf Hot Stove and read his Monday thing where Borny pilfers all his takes for his show from your from your wonderful piece. It's uh, I love having you on there, buddy, and I uh, I really appreciate it. And we'll talk again soon. Okay. Thanks for having me on, man. My pleasure.